and we are live what is up everyone welcome back to the hacks mutter twitch channel or if you're watching this after the fact welcome to my youtube channel i say this every time but i really mean it it's truly an honor for you to take this time out of your day whether it's live while it's happening or just watching me on youtube you stumbled across this it's an honor to have you hanging out with me guys before i dig into it i gotta show this off like I got official official merch. I don't know if y'all can see it very good. We got some Hack Smarter merch on the back. has a link to the Twitch. Um, if you want a shirt like this, they are available at every... No, it's not available anywhere. This is the only shirt in existence right now. Um, but truly, if you want a Hack Smarter shirt, I don't have any desire to make money off of shirts. So if you just shoot me a message, I will just send you a link to the place where I got it from and the design. And you can go get your own Hack Smarter shirt and be as cool as me <laughs> with your shirt. But I, I feel like an official hacker with it. I went back and forth on the white text or the green text, but I thought like, I don't know if you guys can see this in the video very well. It's a nice green text. Reminds me of a true hacker's terminal. Um, the the color was actually inspired by Parrot OS. The default in Parrot OS is nice green text and you know, we think of matrix type stuff. So I went with the green color. It matches my eyes. Uh, I'm a true hacker with, with green eyes. And now I got green text on my shirt. But <clears throat> what we are going to do today, ladies and gentlemen, is continue our AWS pen testing series. So I work for a company called Rhino Security Labs. I am a, a associate pen tester. It just means I'm like a new pen tester. Uh, and I generally do like web apps and external pen tests. I do not do AW, AWS pen testing yet, but Rhino is known for AWS pen testing. And one of the reasons for that is we have developed a really cool open source tool called CloudGoat, which allows you to set up your own AWS pen testing lab and you can learn cloud pen testing. I think this is really important and I shared this in my first video, but there's not too many good resources for learning cloud pen testing. I know Hack the Box has some uh, cloud stuff. I think they have an AWS Fortress, but a lot of their real cloud pen testing stuff is behind a pretty major paywall. You have to have a business account with Hack the Box and then you can access their cloud stuff. I believe Try Hack Me may also have some stuff for coming out with stuff, but once again, just for business customers. From what I can see, there's not too many things for uh, consumers and noobs like you and me to learn cloud pen testing. But Cloud Goat is the way to do it. If you missed my first video, you can either watch the stream here on Twitch or on YouTube. I posted it, and I think it's only a 20 minute video on Intro to Cloud Goat, where I explain what Cloud Goat is and explain step by step how to set it up in your environment so that you can follow along with me. So if you missed that video, you probably can't follow along today, but you can just hang out and maybe, maybe learn as we dive into the stuff. Or maybe you're working and you just have me on in the background and you want to listen to me talk. Either way, I don't really care. Uh, my goal is to learn something through this. My final caveat before we dive into it is I am nothing close to an expert. So my philosophy, and those of you who have watched this before, you know this, a lot of content creators will work through like a box and hack the box or try hack me. And then what they'll do is they'll take all their notes and they'll create a very short, like 10 minute video. Here's a walkthrough how to complete this. Those are helpful, but that's not what I do. So I'm learning this live. I'm troubleshooting live. You guys can follow my thought process. You can see me get frustrated. You can see me hit my head on my fake brick wall behind me. I'll just show this to you guys for those of you haven't seen it. Looks real, right? It's just fabric. So this is if I get angry, I can bash my head against it without knocking myself out. Uh, but really, I'm learning this as we go. I have not prepped this ahead of time, and we are going to stumble our way through it. Now, I left off the stream yesterday being stuck at a particular point, and the nice thing about being part of Rhino is uh, there's people at Rhino who know a bunch about AWS pen testing and pinged uh, a guy at Rhino, and he told me exactly what I was missing. So I will share that with you guys, and hopefully you'll learn something as well. So without any further ado, let me go ahead and share my screen i wonder if i'm sharing the right screen one second i didn't check this ahead of time let's see what happens when i hit share screen okay yep i figured that would happen uh new mistake usually i check this ahead of time let me see if i switch it to this there we go now we're over at cali linux right here hopefully you guys can see that okay and i should ask you guys on on twitch does everything sound good everything look good to you i'm gonna get a drink of water while you answer that Actually, a drink of Diet Dr. Pepper. This uh, this stream is sponsored by Dr. Pepper. If they would send me some free Dr. Peppers, I'll take them. All right, everybody's saying everything's good. Cool. Well, hey, just while we get started, curious for those of you watching on Twitch, do any of you have AWS pen testing experience? If you do, you might need to hold my hand. 
as we stumble our way through this. Let me adjust my microphone a little bit, get everything set up on my monitor. Golden Knox says, nope. All right, Golden Knox, we're, we're in the same boat, so we're going to learn together. Um, a few resources. My mouse stopped moving. I'm still trying to get over a cold, guys, so if I sniffle, I apologize. I've had this cold for, I don't know, five or six weeks. It's not COVID. I got tested for that, but it's just a cold that won't go away. One resource I would recommend to you guys, and I'll make my screen big one more time, and I promise I'll remember to go back, is this book right here, actually written by the founder of Rhino Security Labs. And uh, this is kind of what I've been going through, and it's been really helpful for me. So uh, the real good AWS pen testing stuff starts in Chapter 7. So I've read Chapter 7 through Chapter 12, and it's helped me at least understand some of the basics. But as you can see, I still have a lot more to go in the book. So my what I'm doing for learning is I'm doing Cloud Goat here on stream alongside while working through this book. And it has been helpful overall. Okay, let me go back to sharing my screen. And I got Twitch pulled up, so I'm monitoring the chat. So if you guys have questions as we go through stuff or comments, feel free to post them in the chat. Now, let me just remind you guys kind of where we left off last time. So if we back up a little bit, here is the Cloud Goat scenario we're working through, vulnerable Lambda. We're abusing a vulnerable Lambda function. And we're going to do some injection attacks here. So you can kind of see the exploitation route listed here. Here's a high-level overview walkthrough. And what I shared in the first video is I'm treating this more like try hack me and less like hack the box. And what I mean by that is in try hack me, when you're working through a module or a room, it will guide you step by step on how to do it. And the goal is learning because at the end of the day, you do not know what you don't know. Hack the box, on the other hand, is you're given a machine and it's like, hey, figure it out, go at it. Both learning methodologies are good, but when you're learning something completely new to you, I think the try hack me um, process is a little more helpful because once again, you don't know what you don't know. And what I'm gonna do is after I'm done working through these following the guide here, kind of walks us through the commands and we'll Google stuff that we don't know. When I'm done doing this uh, on stream, I'm gonna go through all of these again offline and try to do them blind just to build that muscle memory. So that's my learning process. If you really wanna learn AWS pen testing, I would encourage you to do likewise. Follow the guide kind of on your first work through and then try to go through it blind and, and see if you can uh, make it your way through it. So here's what we accomplished in the last stream, the last video. And once again, if you missed that, uh, it's on stream. Otherwise, part one of this video will be posted on YouTube tomorrow. I believe I have it scheduled to post. So you can catch it on YouTube pretty soon. And then this will be posted shortly afterwards for part two. So we got our permissions for the billable user. This is kind of like this command is your general almost who, who am I command in the AWS CLI. So we got that. We listed all of our roles and we assumed a role for privesk. And this is kind of where we got stuck. So when you run this command, it's going to give you so you can run anything you want here for the role session name. Um, what I did was please subscribe when I was going through testing here. So you fill out this CG Lambda invoker arm from uh, the previous command, your role session name can be whatever you want. I did please subscribe here. And now here is where I messed up. So here's what I was trying to do. I understood so based on this command syntax, we had to set up a profile. And the way I was doing it was AWS, um, I think it would be configure like that. Yeah, profile. And then I would do like, please subscribe or whatever you put for your role session name. The problem is when you set this up, and I'll just show you guys an example, do one, two, three. If I do this, it's going to ask me for an AWS access key, which you'll get from the previous command when you assume that role. And then it's going to ask for uh, well, an ID and an access key. The regions, you can leave blank. But here's what it's missing. So when you generate that previous command, it's giving you a session token. But when you configure an AWS profile in this way, you have no way of setting up a session token. So that's why it kept failing for us. Now, the way to fix that, I'm not actually going to show you guys my credential file because that would be a bad idea. But AWS, I think I made an example one. There we go. AWS, kind of like SSH, and your home folder has a .aws folder, and that's where you can access credentials. So kind of, a, I guess, a pen testing tip is if you're on a machine, uh, we often look for .ssh, or at least I do, to see if you can find any creds. Well, you can also look for .aws because you can find credentials here. What you actually have to do is the credentials that are generated by this step right here, it'll provide you with um, an access ID, a secret key, as well as a session token. You have to take those credentials, you have to go to this folder on your machine, your AWS credentials folder, and then this first thing is gonna be your profile. So that's that's this role, 
uh, whatever you want here. So whether you name it, please subscribe like I did, Hack Smarter, Mr. Robot, whatever you name it, you can name it whatever you want. But that name's going to go in right here on this file, this AWS credentials file. You'll already have this if you set up all the AWS stuff ahead of time. If you didn't, watch the first video. Then you're going to drop your AWS access key ID there in this exact format, your secret access key in that exact format. And here is what we were missing on the standard AWS configure profile thing was the session token. It never gave us the option to put in the session token, but when you do it through your credentials file, you can drop the session token in there. And that is what fixes the issue that you and I were stuck at yesterday. So with all that being said, I'm actually gonna stop sharing my screen just for a moment. Um, I'm going to get Slack pulled up. So I'm actually working while I do this. I'm gonna go back to my screen. I just wanted to make sure it didn't pull up on my main screen. Uh, Rhino has graciously allowed me to uh, do this while I'm working, but I also need to pay attention to work stuff. So I'm gonna keep one eye, uh, one of my monitors just checking out Slack. So I should have some time to hang out with you guys and hack, but there's always a chance I gotta got to jump off. But I think we are all caught up from the stream last week. Hopefully those of you who followed along and were stuck like I was, this makes a little more sense to you and you are no longer stuck. So let's see what we are doing now. I kind of went up just to this point to see if this worked. I'm not gone beyond this point. So this is, this is what we need to do now. And I was typing these all out to kind of build that muscle memory. And maybe I still will actually, I'm gonna pull it up on this screen. You guys can't see this. It's obviously easier to um, copy and paste all these commands, but when you're learning, or at least when I'm learning, I don't know if this is true about you, when I'm learning, I think it's important to type out the full command, uh, make mistakes, make typos as you do it, because it helps build kind of that, I don't know if muscle memory is the right word, but just helps you get into the habit of writing out and learning the AWS CLI structure. So what we are going to do is list the Lambdas to identify the target vulnerable Lambda. So we'll do AWS profile. Now this profile is whatever we put in our credentials thing and whatever we defined with our role before. I did that first part in uh, the first video. So if you missed that, please watch the first video and that'll make sense to you. So we'll do please subscribe. That is the one I made. Our default region is going to be US East one, Lambda and then list functions and fingers crossed that it works. Okay, it did work. So a few things that we can see here. Let's see if we can walk our way through this. So we, of course, know um, Lambdas is serverless, which is a little bit confusing because, you know, it's not technically correct. Of course, it runs on a server. Um, but what a Lambda, what Lambda functions are often used for, they're kind of like hooks or things that trigger. So you could use a Lambda function, for example, to scan, let's say, a file for viruses that uh, you have an upload feature on your website. And when a file is uploaded, it triggers a Lambda function that then uh, submits that file to whatever AV virus scanner you have and sees if it's clear, right? So Lambda kind of has hooks and depending on what actions happen, it triggers the Lambda functions. Now, I say that as a noob to this, I am in the process of learning this. So those of you on Twitch, you know better than I do, please correct me if my uh, understanding of that is wrong or on YouTube, leave a comment and tell me why I am wrong. But here we have our function. We have the function name of our Lambda function, which looks like is a policy applier Lambda one. We have the ARN right here. We have the code Python 3.9. We have the role um, that the Lambda function has. We have a handler, some code size. Let's see description. This function will apply a managed policy to the user of your choice. So long as the database says it's okay. Now, this is interesting. This should, this should grab your attention. We see database. Now, anytime there's a database, one thing to test is an injection attack. Now, depending on the database, it might be a SQL injection attack or a NoSQL injection attack. But when there's a database, and if our Lambda is working with the database, we should always think, huh, maybe an injection attack might be possible. We have some timeout stuff, memory size, last modified, our code SHA, our version, tracing config. So we have a revision ID, package type, architecture, ephemeral storage. I'm saying that wrong because I can't pronounce it. Snap start. Okay, all of that stuff makes sense to me, but if any of this doesn't make sense to you, I would encourage you, Google it, right? That's that's the way you learn, is anytime you come across something that seems confusing, go ahead and Google it and learn from that. I'm gonna get Twitch pulled back up, make sure there's no chat in the Twitch. There isn't, okay, perfect. Okay, so what do we need to do now? Let's pull up our handy dandy cheat sheet. So we just did this command right here. 
So this command will show you all Lambda functions. The function belonging to Cloud Goat, the name should start with CG, can apply a predefined set of AWS managed policies to users. In reality, it can only modify the billable user. And we saw that uh, user of your choice for us is only billable. Billable is the only user in our AWS environment that we have set up in our, in our sandbox. Let's keep on moving. So it says, look at the Lambda source code. You should see the database structure in a comment as well as the code that is handling input parameters. It's vulnerable to an injection, so we'll see what an exploit looks like in the next step. So this command will return a bunch of information about the Lambda that can apply policies to Bilbo. Part of this information is a link to a URL that will download the deployment package, which contains a source code for the function. Read over that source code to discover a vulnerability. Well, that sounds pretty fun. Um, let's go ahead and do that, shall we? So we'll pull our terminal back up. And we are going to type AWS, whoops, okay, there we go, AWS profile, please subscribe again, the, the role that we set up, and region, US East 1 as before, lambda, get function, so instead of list function, we're doing get function, and then we have to pass it the function name, which we should be able to grab from right here believe that would be the full function name. It wouldn't be the ARN, the role. So yeah, I believe that's the function name. So let's grab that and let's see what happens. Okay. So let's see if we can read through this. I'll get Twitch pulled back up. What up, Trav Secure? Good to have you joining us, my friend. Gonna check stuff on my other screen, okay. Everything seems good to go. So we have our configuration. We already looked at this. I don't think there's anything new in our configuration that we see here. We can kind of go our way through this. So here's the location. So we have a repository type S3, which is an S3 bucket. We'll learn more about S3 buckets, but the my understanding of them, um, here's kind of how S3 buckets are generally used. It's a place for a company to store, uh, for example, scripts or image files that are then run on a website. And then in the source code of your website, you will link out to that script or image file. And that is how it will load that image. Now, one way to think of it in CTF terms, at least that's helpful for me, is I have a lot more experience doing FTP. When you're studying for OSCP or anything like that, and if there's an FTP port open, port 21, the first thing you check is, can I have unauthenticated access, unauthenticated access to the FTP server? Now, one of the exploits you'll run into as you're doing CTFs is if you have unauthenticated access to an FTP server, then you find out, like, can I write to the FTP server? And sometimes the FTP server is actually the web root for a website being hosted on port 80 or 8080, whatever the CTF has it on. And you'll learn that, hey, I have access to an FTP server. I can write to the FTP server and you could upload a reverse shell, like a, a reverse shell dot ASPX, something like that in order to get a call back to your machine. In the same way, if you can compromise an S3 bucket, and if you could write to an S3 bucket that is then writing to a website, you could input malicious JavaScript, you could get a cool cross-site scripting vuln in that way. S3 buckets generally, uh, like the image themselves being hosted are gonna be publicly viewable, but you're not going to be able to list all the files in the S3 bucket unless it's misconfigured. So something to, to be aware of, once again, that's my noob definition, my noob explanation of it. Feel free to correct me if I am wrong. But we have this location, and we have this S3 bucket right here, vulnerable Lambda, and it's passing us this credential, this AWS request. And if we look at our task, it says this. Look at the Lambda code. You should see the database structure, as well as the code that is handling input parameters. It's vulnerable to an injection, and we'll see what it looks like. Uh, so part of this information is linked to a URL that will download the deployment package, which contains the source code for the function. So I think we need to maybe send a git request or, or go on out to that. I'm just going to see. Okay, that's that's the end. So if we, I'm just going to navigate to this in our browser, and we'll see um, where it goes to. See what happens. See if it works. Okay. So we have that. Now, if we go here, we'll just open a new tab. And I'll make this bigger. And if we go to our downloads folder, I don't remember what that was called. Do, do, do. Oh, there it is. So we'll unzip vulnerable lambda. Okay. 
Oh, did it unzip it? Oh, it just dropped it all right here. Okay, well, that's not helpful. So we have date utils, Python, Python, SQLite, SQLite. I wonder if I uh, unzip that and well, let's let's go like this. Let's make a directory and we'll unzip it in that directory just to make it a little more clear. And now can I just unzip into source code? Maybe. I can't just specify the folder. All right, whatever. We'll just go through them. We'll glance at them. I don't have too much in my download folder, so that should be fine. Let's go like this. Okay. We have bin. AWS is from before. Um, that's when I was setting up the CLI. So we have bin, click, 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 default group, date utils, date utils. Postman file, that may be, I think Postman is actually from a CTF I was doing earlier. Python date util. Six. Oh, source code. Hey, that might be helpful. There's nothing in the source code folder. <laughs> I'd assume they're supposed to be, right? What if I do it the old GUI way? I'm just curious. So if I open this up. Oh, I just made that folder. You're right, Jay Gold. <laughs> That's funny. I'm the one who made the source code folder. And then I got confused why there's nothing in the source code folder. See, guys, I'm definitely like elite hacker if you can't tell. Okay, so as we look at this, um, I'm trying to think what would be most interesting. Let's check this out. Will it open for us? Checking on Visual Studio Code, main.py. Okay, so importing Boto 3 from SQLite Utils, import database. So here we have some database information my database.db, I am client, and I am right there. We have some policies here that are commented out, but we get, I think, I think this is the database structure that it's referring to. So I see this kind of glancing through this. We have this administrator access, Amazon route, Amazon Glacier, Amazon S3 read only. This administrator access seems interesting to me. I'm um, just kind of glancing through this. We have a handler for policy and target policies. Statement, select policy from policy, policy name, public true for row and database query statement, applying policy name, blah, blah, blah. Okay, well, I think this is what we're hunting for. Oh, because it even mentioned a comment now that I'm thinking of it. Let's glance at that again. So if we go back to our cloud goat scenario, Look at the Lambda source code. You see the database structure in a comment, which we did. Here's our database structure in a comment. So we, we found that correctly. Um, as well as the code that is handling input parameters. It's vulnerable to an injection. And that would be, so target policy equals event policy names, event username, the target policies are target policies. I believe that's the area that it's referring to. So I bet we will be doing some type of SQL ejection probably to the administrator access area. So a command return blah blah contains the source code. We found that. Invoke the role applier lambda function which is our please subscribe function. Passing the name of the billable user and the injection payload. Okay. So it's actually going to give us the injection payload. So we have our policy applier lambda name. And then, okay, so we are passing it the payload on that administrator access. And we're commenting, well, we're, we're throwing a quote in there. And then we're, we're commenting out right there. Username is going to be our full billable username. All right. Well, let's see. Let's see if we can. Let's see if we can piece this together. Uh, together. We'll jump back over here, and 
I'm glancing over it on my other screen. We'll type this full thing out and let's see if we can just kind of explain our way through it as we do it. So we have AWS, come on, AWS profile. We've done that a lot of times. We're passing it the role that we made up, um, the please subscribe role, region US East one, Lambda invoke. So instead of get function or list function, we're invoking, which makes sense because we want it to do something for us. So we're invoking this vulnerable Lambda function. And then we have to specify, hey, here is the Lambda function I want to invoke, which I think would be right here, right? Oh, no, those are just tags. Uh, let's scroll up function name. I think this is the name that we're looking for. So let's grab that vulnerable function name. Go down here like that. So we have our function name there. And now we're going to pass it through the CLI, the binary format format. Move it over here so I can see the rest of this command. So raw in base 64 out, I think we all know we can understand that raw in base 64 out and then we're going to pass it this specific payload so it's policy names Am I doing this right policy names this is where i'm probably going to have a typo and we'll probably have to type this a few times but oh well administrator access and that's the policy that we saw before like that comment out like that and like that i believe is how it looks and then we're going to pass it our username. Can't see my keyboard because of my microphone. And now we need to get the username of our Bilbo user, which we could just do. I believe it was what AWS profile Bilbo. Yeah, there it is. US East one. We don't want to list roles, ITS, get caller identity. That will give us the full Bilbo username. There it is. So there's our full Bilbo username right there. So let's go ahead and copy that. Jump back over to this tab. And we are going to, making sure I get all these quotes right. Pass that in there, close that one, and then out.text. <laughs> what are the chances I have a typo in that, guys? Okay. Cannot request, cannot parse request body into JSON, cannot parse payload into JSON, unrecognized token CG, was expecting JSON string number array object or token null, true or false, at source byte policy names. Was it at the username? Or, no, I didn't create that file. The following arguments are required out file. I think I just need to do that. Like, <laughs> what's out file? I mean, in the command syntax, it just says out.txt like that. Maybe my command's wrong. Let's do a sanity check on here. And I'm going to actually copy this command and we'll just do like pluma syntax. And so here's the command here. Profile assume role lambda invoke function name, which if we scroll up, I'm gonna copy and paste it and see, am, is, am I erring not because I have a typo on here. So here's our function name, I think. That would be the function name. I mean, it's quite literally called function name. So I'm gonna say that is probably the function name. So let's drop the function name there. CLI and then policy names. That's just the payload that we're passing it. So we shouldn't have to edit anything there. And then we need our full Bilbo username, which we just grabbed a second ago. I think it was actually in this window. There's our full Bilbo username. All right, let's, oh, does it, 
hold up. I think it would just go like this, right? Let's see if my syntax is incorrect. Do, 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 do. Let's do it here. Oh, I never updated assume role. Okay. Well, that's a different error message. So that's that's a plus, isn't it? This is the we need to update this to please subscribe. Let's see if that works. Oh, okay. Let me look at Twitch. Kelly Max said close quote on username. I did close it. So that's the quote right here. Um, I'm quite literally copying and pasting it now. So the only thing I noticed is it had these around here, but I assume that was just because like, hey, we want you to replace this. I don't think that's gonna be the fix. Okay, different error message. That's good. The security token included in the request is expired. Which would be the security token for our please subscribe profile. Maybe that actually has expired. One way that we can check is we should get that if, if that's the issue, right? So we should... Uh, let me just go ahead and save this. We'll come back to that. We should get that same issue when we run this command. Go back. This. Okay, so that's our error. So our please subscribe account that we set up with that role has actually expired. So we're going to reset that up. I'll have to stop sharing my screen once we get to that point because I'll have to pop the creds into my credential folder and the session token in my credential folder, but I'll at least show you guys how we get that. I'm looking over here, list lambdas to identify a target vulnerable lambda. Uh, here's where we assume the role. So here's the command to fix that. AWS profile, Bilbo, region, US East one, STS, assume role, role, arn. And now we need our lambda. I don't know if that's the right one. I'm gonna have to back up and do a few commands real quick so I get the right information. So if we do, I am going to copy and paste this command just to save time. Uh, let's see. I think that'll work. Okay, so we got that. And then we need to drop this one in here, the CG target roll. And if you missed when I first did this, I walked through all of this initially in my first video. And then we have that. And now we are going to do this command. This is going to generate a new session token for us. So we'll do profile, Bilbo, region, US East 1, I am, or not I am, would be STS, assume, roll, roll, arn. And then we need our lambda invoker ARN right here. So let's grab that. And then role session name, please subscribe. Here is where I'm going to go just to my face while I do this. So what I'm going to do now is what that command is going to give me are a few things. I now have an access key ID, a secret access key, and a session token. And I now need to go replace that in my uh, credential file. So I'm going to go do that while you guys, you guys can check out my sweet shirt again. I bet once we do this, we'll be able to complete that last little part of this exercise. But I'm glad we ran into that problem and we were able to troubleshoot it ourselves. So I'm going to say that's a win uh, that we figured out what was going on there. Okay. Grab my access key ID. So once again, I'm just adding that to my creds. And then as soon as I'm done doing this, I'll go back to sharing my screen for you guys. key ID 
and you actually have to it, it generates a new access key id a new secret access key and a new session token so if you're following along and yours aired out that way as well you have to re-put all of those into your session file and finally i'm at my session token almost back to you guys we'll drop this into my session token okay save that close that and we'll clear all right <clears throat> back to my screen welcome back let's try running this command again i think i catted it here so i use the same please subscribe let's just try this full command now What did I do differently? Let's try to take this away. Is that my issue? Error occurred when calling the invoke operation. Cannot parse request body in JSON. Cannot parse payload in JSON. Unrecognized token CG was expecting that. All right, pull up Twitch again. If you guys see what I might be missing, please let me know. I think Rhino actually wrote a blog about this scenario, so I can always go check out that blog. <laughs> If I get truly stuck. Just checking out messages. Okay, I want to. Let's do syntax again. I was trying to figure out what I'm doing wrong. Oh, I don't need that, I guess. So here is directly from the cheat sheet. So our assume role, we know for sure that's please subscribe. Lambda invoke function name. Functions should still be the same, I'd assume. Actually, while I'm doing this, let's try each one that I tried over here quick. Hmm. Amoeba man, if you're still here, tell me how to fix this, dude. You know this stuff. <laughs> Profile, please subscribe. Region, US East 1, Lambda, Invoke, Function, Name. Oh, we have a typo here. Vulnerable, Lambda, that. Policy, Applier, Lambda 1. CLI, Binary Format, Payload. I think that payload looks correct to me. Username, our Bilbo username here, which is the same as what it was before. Out.text. Okay. An error occurred, invalid request content exception. When calling the invoke operation, cannot parse request body into JSON. Thinking. Cannot parse payload into JSON. Unrecognized token, CG. Was expecting JSON string number array object or token null true or false at source byte. Maybe man says unless it has something to do with that block for policy names. I mean, what would be the fix? <clears throat> I'm 
look at the syntax again. Oh, do I still have this open over here? I just don't know. I don't know what is going wrong. Username CG Bilbo Vulnerable Lambda, line one, column 63. So here's our script. Kelly Max said, remove square brackets from administrator access. I think that they're on purpose because if you if you notice here, we I think the square bracket is there. Like it's supposed to be there, but we can try that. Payload policy names. Username. main payload policy names Amazon SNS read only access lambda read only access put the username part in double quotes okay all right let's try a few things then so if we pull this up let's try to put our username part in double quotes so if we put one right there and it would be what like here no Oh, and he's double quotes around the CG part. Okay. So you're saying like that. Stream's like a few minutes behind, so apologize for that, but. Yeah, so like this, right? Username, that, and then double quotes here around the CG part of it. Let me know if that's correct to you. Colin part. No, the what comes after the blood? Stupid twitch. I mean the column part. <laughs> you mean CG Bilbo, right? But not double double quotes, just single double quote. Oh, <laughs> obviously. <laughs> okay. Just checking our quotes here. So we have we have this single quote here, right? And we have a single quote here. We have a double quote here, double quote here, bunch of quotes there. Double quote, double quote, out. I don't know, here goes nothing. Amoeba man, dude, you're a genius. Even on AWS, I don't know how you know all this stuff, bro. Um, I'm just looking at this initial one. I might, so that's that's missing here, of course. I might actually go in and uh, update our actual GitHub here and just fix this and and throw the quotes in there just so other people don't run into this issue. So I might do this when I'm off stream is, is jump into GitHub and fix this. Jay Gold said, I'm confused what you even just did there. So the problem, Jay Gold, is that without those quotes around the Bilbo username, it wasn't proper JSON. So it wasn't able to parse it properly. It was JSON syntax. Yeah, just JSON syntax, not AWS things. So I'll probably update our GitHub and fix that part of it. Uh, Cat3 is also confirm everything is working okay, which we, of course, did that. And we got a status code 200 executed version latest. Very cool. Now that Bilbo is an admin, which I'm curious, let's look at, uh, I'm going to go back to my screen. I believe what I have pulled up in my AWS console is just the sandbox. Yeah, it is. Okay, I can go back to share my screen now. So here is the user. Oh, okay, we'll jump from there. Looks like it wants me to re-authenticate to the council, but I'm not going to do that right now. Let's just go back to, we'll close that out. We'll come back to it later. 
So now that Bilbo's an admin, use credentials for that user to list secrets from Secrets Manager. Well, let's give it a shot, shall we? So AWS profile, Bilbo, region, US East 1, Secrets Manager list secrets. Boom. We did it. So we have our secrets list here, secret manager, detection, evasion, hard secret. This is the final secret for hard path. Oh, hey, we got the hard path, the detection, evasion, cloud goes scenario. Just kidding. That doesn't count for us. And then we have this detection, evasion. So it looks like there's going to be an evasion scenario that we do. And these tickets will be included there. But now it says we need a list of specific secrets. So one of these secrets should be like the secret for what we're doing, vulnerable Lambda final flag. I'm guessing it's this secret right here, which would be the secret ID. I think we actually need this guy right here. So now if we do AWS, whoops, AWS profile Bilbo region us east one secrets manager get secret value secret id pass it the secret id like that and i think we are good to go that's kind of our final flag it would appear we were able to let's just recap kind of what we did through this process and let's actually go to the big level overview and see if we can make sense of what we've done in these past um, two days <clears throat> so we got our permissions for the bilbo user that was just doing our standard like who am i kind of aws equivalent command hack tricks has a helpful aws page that walks through some of this so if you just go to like aws hack tricks right here um, and notice this, guys, on the AWS pen testing page on Hacktricks, look at the number one resource, Rhino Security Labs Cloud Goat represent. Um, but he has some good just basic commands for like who am I type stuff. So get permissions for the Bilbo user. We listed all the roles. So this is all in the previous stream. We list Lambdas to identify the target Lambda. And if you guys remember right when we were doing that, what caught my attention right away before we even looked at the cheat sheet was when we were looking at the target Lambda, it was giving us allow. But what should have caught our attention was it was a wild card. It was allowing us access to like all resources and things like that. And we Googled Lambda and we Googled wild card and AWS specifically said your Lambda should never have a wild card. So we knew, hey, there's something vulnerable about this Lambda. We uh, looked at the Lambda source code. That's when we, well, we downloaded the source code and we looked at it. We assumed the Lambda invoker role. We crafted an injection payload to send to the CLI. We cried while we did that. Amoeba man saved the day. Base64 encoded that payload. The single quote injection character is not compatible with the AWS CLI command otherwise. Invoked the policy applier Lambda function, passing the name of the Bilbo user and the injection payload. And now that Bilbo is an admin, we use the credentials for that user to list secrets from Secrets Manager. That is what we did. Looking over the chat, a me man said, so I don't 100% follow everything here. Um, and you, I think you missed the when we worked through the first like three or four tasks. That might be part of it. He said, but if I summarize for myself, then we have access to a user that can execute a Lambda function. That function has the ability to interface with AWS policies. So we abuse it to assign the admin policy to our user, allowing us to privess that in line. Or am I missing something? You're spot on, I believe. And then me man said, cool, then I'm happy. Cloud is not my specialty. Me neither, obviously. But hopefully one day I can do legit AWS pen test. But I'm still in the beginning of it. Well, hey, guys. Um, thank you. You hung out with me for a whole hour. Um, we will be starting scenario two. I'm going to hop off for a little bit, check some work stuff, make sure everything's still good. But I'll probably be back on stream sometime this afternoon. And we will dive into scenario two. And we see, we'll see what we can learn from scenario two. So, th guys, thank you for hanging out for those of you hanging out with me live thank you for those watching on youtube and i will catch you guys in the next one see ya